Hi, my name's Thurston, and I used to be a statistic. What I want to do is I want to share my story with you so you can understand that no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at in life, no matter how dark it looks, how grim it looks, or how painful it is, I want you to know that you can make it through and that God has something on the other side for you. Um, I was at church talking to the pastor, Pastor Fred at Impact Church. He's involved in like the prison outreach stuff. So I was talking to him about just wanting to go into the prison system and going into the, the trenches and share, share my story, share my testimony about victory and overcoming all these things and obstacles that was placed in front of me. And I truly, truly believe that I overcame because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for my sins. Because if it was up to me, I would have been dead. Okay? Remember, I started off saying my name is Thurston. I used to be a statistic. I would have been gone if it was up to me. I have done probably every stupid or dumb thing you could imagine that someone would do that's hanging out on the street. But I made it through. Y'all look at my videos, look at my life, look at my timeline, the stories, the posts. And you just see how I'm out here living life. But let me tell you, it did not start off like this. Okay. It didn't start like this. I was at a dark place, man, sitting inside the penitentiaries, right? In special housing units, even just sleep, sleeping in dorms with 70 other people in dark places. I've dealt with addiction, deal with stress, deal with street life, criminality. I've dealt with violence. I've been booked, served time, served several years, over a decade in prison, okay? I've been a, a fugitive for five years. I've been a fugitive, okay? I sold drugs, sold dope, sold crack, sold heroin, sold all that stuff way in the past, a long time ago. So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, if you're doing something or going through something if you live in that trap life if you stuck on the block and you like oh all i can do is beat up the block beating up the block is all i got this is my identity this is what my family does i'm i'm here i'm living proof telling you that there is another way it's another side of the spectrum that you just got to open your eyes up to what happened to me i had like a burned and bush moment i had a burning bush moment god was just working with me in his own way okay so I'm going to start back with it in 2008. I was 20 years, 28 years old in 2008, probably still 27, early 2008, but turned 28. And I was a federal fugitive running for, well, state and federal fugitive running for some charges I had. And I was in St. Louis, Missouri, and Barack Obama was running for president back then. And I was like, ah, oh, he'll never be the president. If he do get the president, it'd be a joke. Woo, woo, woo. And I'm just focusing on street life, trying to make it, trying not to go to prison, trying not to hurt nobody, trying to feed my family and have a good time and party like a rock star. So that's all I was doing. And then Barack Obama became president when he walked across stage that night and all the votes wasn't back. But they said based off of the electoral college votes that he had enough to win because the two states that didn't come in yet didn't have enough electoral college votes to change it. And I watched him and his family walk on stage. And I said, damn. What else has people taught me that I truly believe in that is actually wrong? Like, I truly believe that we would never have a black president. And I was truly wrong. So at 28 was the first time in my life that I started saying, let me make sure this out. Sorry for the feedback. 28 was the first time in my life that I started saying that I could probably do something different, that I don't got to sell dope, that I don't got to be out here toting a gun, that I don't got to be out here getting high, doing all this foolishness at 28 years old was the first time that I actually had that thought realistically to myself through the grace of God, because I had a praying mama and a praying grandma, two praying grandmas, okay? But I was submerged in that street life. I was moving packs, getting work, pulling licks, doing whatever, whoop de whoop. We ain't gonna get into it. But I'm just saying that I got through that to get here and give God the glory and tell you and your situation 
that it is something else out here so beautiful and so better for you. But you got to tap in. You got to tap in, man, to something that's been buried inside of you. It's a seed that somebody planted inside of you. I don't know if it's probably your granddaddy, your uncle, your auntie, your mama, your cousin, your niece, your friend, your homegirl. It could have been a radio song that's been planted inside of you that tells you that God got something for you if you just will hand it over and trust him and let him work this out. Because no matter how strong you is, no matter how thorough you is, you cannot work this thing out called life alone. You got to take the keys. Just like, boom, take the keys and say, God, I've been driving this car over and over, and I crashed it over and over, and I need some help. So, God, I want to give you the keys. I want to give you the keys to my life and let you order my steps in your word. Okay? So, remember what I'm telling you. I was a statistic. I was doing all this. But I had that whole epiphany moment with Barack say, you know what? I'm going to do something better with my life. Then immediately I forgot about it. Went back to thugging. Straight back to thugging. Probably by the time the sun came up, I went right back to doing whatever foolishness I was into. Um, fast forward, 2010, going through a traumatic time in my life. Still a fugitive. I was a fugitive for about five years now. Did not know I was going to be on the run that long, but it worked out. And I had an epiphany. God spoke to me and told me that he had something better for me if I just trusted in him. If I just trusted in the Lord, he had something better for me. So all the dark stuff, the deep, the secrets, the hiding, all the hurt and deceit that I, I did, that I was part of. God said he still has something for me. If I would just give him control and believe in, believe in him. So when they say he pulls you out the muck and miry clay, that's where I was at. I was down deep. And I believed so much that I called 911 and turned myself in. Now we seven minutes into this video. I don't talk about that a lot. I turned myself in. I believed in the Lord and said, God I got something better for me than what's going on right now. That's when I put my faith in God truly and walked in him when I called the police on myself as a fugitive in Louisville, Kentucky, police came, pick me up. It was 2010. I just say, you know what, God, I, I give, I give myself away so you can use me. You've been talking to me. You've been dealing with me. I've been praying. I did all this. And you know what, God, I'm tired of being out here trying to control my life. So I want to give you the keys and let you drive it in order to drive it. I got to clean up what I done messed up. So I turned myself in. Soon as I got to jail, let me tell you what happened. As soon as I got to jail, I forgot about God. Quick. See, because I don't know if you've been locked up or if you ever went to court on some serious charges and don't know when you're about to walk back out that door. But once them, them bars roll, once you wake up at five, six o'clock in the morning for breakfast and you're still hungry and you got to smell people shitting. Burping, farting, hearing all that. I forgot all about God um, uh, immediately and went back to my little thuggish, rugged self, man. I was in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a tough jail. Went up there. Was they didn't even have a bed for me to sleep on. I'm going to share this story later. But I took somebody's bed my first day there. I was like, yo, I want the mat. I was the only person from Virginia there. But dude came over to me after I took his bed. I told him, get it how he lived. And he went back and sat down. So, but not to glorify the foolishness. I'm trying to glorify the grace of God, how he'll get you through and how when he call you, sometimes you say, okay, God, I'm going to do it. I'm here. I'm listening. You take like two steps and then turn back around and keep going, do what you do. But through his grace and through his mercy, he'll save you and he'll pull you through. He'll pull you through. I used to, man, I was... Probably the worst of the worst, man. Definitely the worst of the worst. Somehow I'm still here. They say, I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. And God don't make no jump. So I went through the criminal justice system, went back to Virginia, got sentenced, six years, 10 months, had to go to state, had to go to the feds for time, and just navigated through it. But God used me. He kept speaking to me, man. When I was in prison, I had favor. I really had favor in prison. I was like the staff cook, so I got to eat good. I got to eat salad. 
got to eat, you know, whatever the the officers was was eating, I got to eat it. And life was good. I just was away. I was locked up, but I wasn't struggling. I was okay. And you just navigate through it. And God, if God got favor on you, he put favor on you. So I was up there praying. I was in the choir singing because I knew that the favor of God was on me and that he could use my walk to bring other prisoners to him. And I always say, let the big, the best testimony I or the best sermon I ever give be the life that I live. And God was using me in those institutions to draw others into him, to teach brothers how to pray, to walk through the Bible, to walk through scripture. You know, I was able to pray with the Spanish brothers and build relationships and just have have fun finding my identity in Christ. Just finding out who I am, not being embarrassed that I do believe in God and that I do want to pray and not being embarrassed that I, I'm thinking about whether or not I'm going to go to heaven or go to hell and not being embarrassed because I want to praise him and say hallelujah. Or I want to walk up to one of my homeboys and talk about, you know, how good I feel and how blessed I am today, even though I'm locked up, even though I'm desolate, even though I'm lonely, even though my heart hurts, I still feel good today. And I know that God got something for me on the other side. That's why I'm here, because I chose to believe in him and his will in my life. And guess what? I'm walking in it today. I'm walking in that blessing, y'all. You think I'm playing. I'm walking in that blessing, in that promise that God made me. That he, that, that he got something for me if I just choose to believe and trust in him. And in the scripture where it say, I restore what the canker worm stole from me. It's, it's restoration is, is going on today in my life. September, what is today? September 23rd, 2023. I am walking in the promise of God. A walking testimony. I should have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. That's the, I am a living testimony that God is good and that God is great and that he'll use you. No matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, no matter what you need to stop doing, no matter how many times you're going to bump your head and fall and don't get it right, I want to tell you God is going to use you. And if you ever thought about killing yourself, that is not the way. I've never been suicidal, but God just put it on my mind to say that if you ever thought about just tapping out and taking your life, ooh, that is not the way. God got something for you. Just give your life over to the Lord today. I ain't even come on here to make an altar call. I came on here to say, I came on here to say that no matter you know where you're at in life, what step you're in, that that you can make it. You can make it. No matter what's going on, you can make it. You got what it takes. You can't do it alone. You need to find you some believers, surround yourself with somebody with a common belief system. You need to separate yourself and just give him control. Give him control of your life. In church, I found so much in church because my grandma raised me in church. Both of my grandmas was going to church heavy. So like I found so much comfort in church. I got a family in church. You know, I go to Impact Church in Jacksonville, Florida, and the way they cut their word up in there, <laughs> I want to get involved in their prison ministry. Brother Fred, I'm actually sending this video, man, because this video was something that you encouraged me to do. And I do hope that somebody can hear this story. I know I may have cursed a little bit. You know, that's just me. That's how I talk. I'm working on it. I'm not 100 percent. I'm not even going to say nothing ignorant. I'm working on it. But um, God is good and his mercies endure forever. And that when they say you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear no evil. I don't even feel it. I don't even fear it no more because he's with me. And I know that his rod and his staff is comforting me. <laughs> and when he say he prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies, I'm eating on that table. I got that platter right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for getting me in my children's life, getting me in my parents' life, Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to stay free, stay in society, dear God. 
and just enjoy the life. Thank you for the woman that you've given me to live the rest of my life with my beautiful wife. Thank you, God, for the opportunities. Thank you for the employment. Thank you for the dreams and the smiles. Thank you for the friends you brought my way. And thank you for the friends. Thank you for the friends you've taken away. And just want to let somebody know that's listening to this message. I don't care if you got a bottle in your hand now, a blunt in your hand now, a needle in your hand now, a pill in your hand now. I don't care what you got or if you had it in there last night or two days ago. I don't want you to feel guilty. I don't want you to feel like hurt, like you can't come to God. He wants you. If you're sitting around depressed, he wants you. If you got anxiety, he wants you. He want to work with it. If you're in an abusive relationship, he let him in. Experiencing violence, if you out here thugging and can't put the gun down, let him in. Just, just let him in wherever you at. If you locked up, if you on your knees praying every night and you just stumbled upon this while you locked up in a jail cell, in the institution, if you have access to a phone and you see this, man, just pray. Just pray, but you got to listen. And then you have to endure. This road ain't going to be easy. But it's all right. <laughs> when I say it's all right, it's all right. I'm about to go hop on my motorcycle and ride. It's all right, y'all. Y'all stay heavily motivated. Stay humble. Stand up. We ain't sitting down no more. Peace.